go. Welcome everybody to Explanations. My name is Dr. Jeff Hanna and what we like to do on these particular little videos is walk you through a topic of interest that's going to help you out uh, with regard to something with the uh, health if you're experiencing a, a certain syndrome or issue, something like that, where we take an idea that really doesn't do well, just doing like a, a 60 second quick little explanation taking a bit more time to just craft that idea out to explain what options are available to possibly help you out. And in particular, we're doing this video here today for people who are experiencing lower back issues um, with either discs, facet joints, sacroiliac joints, stenosis, whatever it would be, lower back issues that unfortunately aren't responding with all of the normal kinds of treatments that you would think of. Whether it would be you're starting out with some uh, medication, whether you are having massage, whether you've been to see the chiropractor, whether you've been to see the physical therapist, the acupuncturist, even if you've had surgery, all of these things, they're awesome and they oftentimes help a large number of people. But unfortunately, there is still a select group of people who don't respond with this treatment. And you're probably wondering if that's you, why is that? And I may not have all of the answers, but I at least have a few possibilities for you that's worth exploring here. Now to explain this, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start out with a bit of a weird question here for you. Why does a bull have a ring in its nose? It's a bit of a weird question, but okay. It's because no matter how small you might be, the handler, or how big that bull is, if you've got that bull and hold it as a handle, the ring is a handle, However small you are, that bull will go wherever you direct it. It's the exact same reason why in football, face masking is such a dangerous penalty because you grab somebody's face mask, you can rip and tear their body and they'll go wherever you pull them. So the point in the principle for you right here is that where your head goes, your body will follow. Now, this is important if and when you've ever had some kind of a head or neck injury. Even if there's no broken bones, dislocations, bleeding, or anything like that, if you have a shift in your head's center of gravity, your brain is not going to like that. And what it's going to do is it's going to produce compensatory posture distortions. And not just at your head and your neck. It's going to go to your shoulder, and it's also going to go all the way down to your lower back. In fact, if you were to stand on a couple of scales, you would find very often that as opposed to you being perfectly symmetrical and balanced, that one side is probably favored more than another. And in and of itself, that is not a problem per se. It is when that compensation persists for days, weeks, months, years, maybe even decades. Your body's not weak. It's designed to win. It's designed to be strong. But because it's a physical system, it can only compensate for these kind of stresses for so long. And in the beginning, what's that going to be like? It's going to be like, oh, I've just got a few little achy, sore muscles. Maybe I overdid it a little bit at the gym, or maybe I'm working too hard, or maybe I'm sitting in front of the computer just a little bit too long. Yeah, it's all right. Maybe it's just me getting older. And so we put it off and don't give it any attention. If we ignore it long enough, then what it's going to do is it's going to shift into the ligaments, which normally hold all of the structures together. That then is going to cause us to start feeling sharp pains, moments where, ooh, that's catching me, that's grabbing me, and where we start to shift our body more frequently in order to compensate for that stress. If you don't know what I'm referring to, go watch any person who's standing in a long line. And if you've been there for any length of time, you'll see where somebody will shift their weight onto one hip. And then they'll shift their weight onto the other hip. And then they'll shift it back. They are trying to compensate because that abnormal stress distribution is too much for them at that point. And then finally, if that can't handle it anymore, that then is where that stress is going to go from a ligament and ultimately start impacting your nerves. And when you start to experience issues with the nerves, it's on. Sharp low back issues, um, sciaticas, all of that sort of fun stuff. Now, that explains then how it is that a problem up in your head can actually have a knock-on effect and go on to affect things in your lower back. But there's a few other things that are probably worth your consideration here first and foremost. So it's not uncommon when people start experiencing acute or even chronic low back issues, 
sciatica, stuff like that, they go have an MRI scan. And what the MRI shows very clearly is that there are bulging discs, herniations going on through the lower back. And the consequence of that is that it's believed, ah, that is the source of irritation. That is what is producing the lower back issue. But there's a few things that I should probably explain that might be worth your consideration here. Okay, first and foremost, what have we got? We've got a couple of silly little models here. And what this is going to be illustrating to you are the vertebrae down through your lower back, and then also representations of the discs. Now, the discs, by their nature, they're actually ligaments, but they're also as strong as the tires on your car. So when people say, oh, I slipped a disc, or it happens very, very suddenly, unless you have been in a massive car accident, you're hit by a truck, discs don't just spontaneously slip. Instead, what they do is they whittle down over a period of time to where any one of those little ligament fibers, if it ever goes ping, aggravated, there's gonna be local inflammation, and that's what can produce some of the acute issues that are associated with chronic back pain. And if that persists long enough, again, the structure starts to wear down, then what happens is it starts to degenerate. And even though people say that this is, quote, age-related degeneration, it's not related to your chronological age. It has to do with the age that this has actually been under stress and duress. So for example, let's say the person, even at 20 years old, had a lower back injury of some kind when they were five years old. Even though you may not be degenerated quite this much, that still would represent a 15-year-old injury, even only being 20 years old. So what happens as things start to wear down is the disc can start to herniate a little bit out the side. And again, that's believed to be the source of irritation to the particular nerve root. And the belief then is that what we need to do is we need to be working on that area directly by either working on the muscles, working on the ligaments, working on the joints, using medication, surgery, physical therapy, chiropractic, any of these combinations of things here to take the pressure off of the nerve so that that lower back issue can and will start to go away. Now, here's the issue with that. First and foremost, about 85% of the population actually has bulging discs in the lower back. And oh yeah, that 85%, they don't experience back pain whatsoever. So the truth is, is that just because a person may have a bulging disc, oftentimes it's a red herring. It's not the true source of irritation for what a person is actually experiencing. And in addition to that, even on this little model, if you look closely right there, you'll see that there's actually the representation as if your spinal cord is going all the way down to that particular level. And the most common area where people do have bulging discs in their lower back, it's between the L4 and 5, and then the L5 and the S1. But here's the thing, your spinal cord, your spinal cord itself, actually ends in the small of your back at approximately the level of L1 and L2. And so what it means is it means that your spinal cord doesn't actually go all the way that low. It ends here, and then what you have are free-floating nerves that descend down and go through the little openings in these areas right through here. And this is my point, is in order for a disc or for the bone or for any of that area to actually be the true source of your pain, your sciatica, your discomfort, your whatever that is, you have to have massive amounts of physical damage because otherwise those areas they're large they're big they're able to find your body's able to find ways to compensate for that so what does that mean in a nutshell what it means is it means that so many of the findings that we associate with lower back pain may actually not be the true origin of it at all just because there might be degenerative arthritis just because there might be bulging discs just because that's where the pain is does not mean that is where the original problem is. So if you're one of the people who's had all of the treatments for your lower back and they've worked for you, wonderful, awesome. But again, I'm talking to the people who have done all the things that they're supposed to do and yet they're still experiencing the same kind of issues. What is going on in your case? So this is where I wanna come back 
to that idea about the bull with the ring in the nose, all right? The reason I say this is because I want you to now visualize. I want you to visualize a balloon with a piece of string attached to it. The balloon is your brain. The string is your spinal cord. And that piece of string is anchored at the base of your skull, the C1 vertebra, the C2, and the C3 up in the top part of your neck. Interesting. And then guess what? It is relatively speaking freely floating even all the way down through that L1, L2 area where the cord itself ends. And then there's a piece of string on the bottom that anchors or tethers it down onto your sacrum or your tailbone. All right. Now, now that you've got that visualization here, what I want you to do is I want you to imagine that that balloon and that string, you start to pull on it like this. So let's say that something actually goes and causes your head to go off of its center of gravity up through here. Well, guess what? It means that the source of the tension is actually pulling the string up at the very top. But guess where the tension is going to be felt and perceived? Down at the bottom. So in this way, what you can actually have that's producing lower back symptomatology, it's not because of the bulging disc per se. It's not because of the degenerative arthritis, and it's not because anything necessarily is squeezing or irritating or inflaming a nerve in the lower back either. No. What can happen is you can have a central processing error as a consequence of mechanical tension originating actually up at the top of your spine. If you've got something that is pulling from the top, pulling on that string, you're perceiving the problem down here as a lower back pain or sciatica, but the reality is, is that may not be where it's coming from in the first place. And in fact, very commonly, what we see when we're looking at people from a simple put a posture perspective, because posture is a reflection about what's going on beneath the surface, how a person's body has been trying to compensate for these kinds of uh, problems and adaptations over a long period of time. What we very characteristically find for people is that in the way that their body normally should have compensated for a problem going up at the top, at some point in their life, they had an additional injury that's caused their center of gravity to shift going the opposite direction. And what we oftentimes see is we see a shoulder drop on one side. And with that, there is a twist phenomenon that actually occurs between a person's shoulder, their torso, and their lower back. And so depending on when and where they may be experiencing physical stress, that's going to be determining what the symptom that the experience is. If the tension is up at the top, it's either going to be migraine, it's going to be vertigo, it's going to be dizziness. If it's in this area right between the shoulders, it's either going to be this persistent burning pain in the top or pain and tingling down into your hands. Or if the point of pressure is down in the lower back, which as human beings, it's one of our weak spots, that then is either going to be producing chronic lower back issues, disc herniations and bulges because of the compensation, or it's actually going to be producing tension on the nerves that we then perceive as a sciatica or that radiating pain into the buttocks and then down into the knee and into the leg and into the foot. And so what I've hopefully explained for you right here is that when we're dealing with chronic lower back issues, especially again, those cases where this isn't responding, even though I'm getting all of the treatment for my lower back, what it means is very likely the origin of the problem is coming from somewhere else. And what that means then is that you need to come up with a different kind of solution to help out your particular presentation. Because the truth is, is that whether it's lower back pain, sciatica, or anything like that, you can have two different people who have the exact same symptomatology, but the underlying cause of it is completely different. And for that reason, you can't just treat the symptom, you have to identify what the underlying cause is. And what I've hopefully explained for you in this video is the link to show you how it could actually be that a problem in the upper part of your neck of all places can very well be that thing that's producing a compensatory effect and that that's actually what's responsible for producing the lower back pain and uh, the sciatica issues down there. So hope you found that this video was both informative, but then more importantly, valuable, especially if you're experiencing these kinds of issues. So what we would ask you to do then is if 
first and foremost, you know somebody who needs to hear this kind of information, they're experiencing these issues, they're not getting the right kind of resolutions, please share this video with them so that they have access to this kind of information so that they're aware of other possibilities that maybe, unfortunately, they're just simply not aware of. Number two, we also like if you would uh, appreciate, like and subscribe to this particular video. It helps the computer algorithms recognize that this video is useful so that again, this can be found by other people who need access to this information. And number three, if this has resonated with you and you're wondering, okay, what can I actually do? What kind of help is available to me? What I would have you do is have you go to our website, which is uppercervicalspokane.com, where you'll find access to all kinds of other articles, videos, blogs, research topics, just like this one here. And it'll give you the right kind of information so that you can find help from uh, somebody who's qualified to be looking at this relationship between the upper neck and how that may be manifesting in the lower back so that you can get back to living well, being well, staying well. This is Dr. Jeffrey Hanna at Clear Chiropractic Spokane when the cause of health begins here. Take care. Bye now.